Hey everyone, James again with TFB TV. Now the AK-47 and its derivatives have been around for the better part of a century. They've probably seen combat in every significant conflict in the past 50 years, and they're probably one of the most popular rifles, if not the most popular rifles on the face of the earth. When you take all of those factors and you put them together, that leads to gun lore. And when you have gun lore, you get gun myths. And God knows there are a lot of them about the AK-47 and the AK platform in general. So we're going to debunk four of those today on TFB TV. And it isn't gonna be just me. I've enlisted the help of more intelligent, funnier, better looking YouTubers than myself. That's right, I've got Carl from In Range who's gonna address one of these myths, and then Mishiko is gonna close this video out. But to start, let's jump right into it and talk about myth number one, perhaps the most prevalent myth about the AK-47, and that is that the AK-47 is inaccurate. So check it out, you look at Google, AK-47 accuracy first results. The AK is not the most accurate weapon when compared to other assault rifles such as the M4. AKs are not accurate. AKs accuracy is considered good enough. Accuracy at 100 meters, 6 inches, 6 MOA. I even saw a really slick looking infograph on another gun blog last week where it said I think the AK was 10 MOA. Now, many of you may have seen the video that I did a year or two ago where I tested the AK-47 against the AR-15, and I've done some videos where I've tested different AK-47s, their accuracy. Here's the AK with the Steel Wolf ammo, and you can see the best group that I could squeeze out of it today was just shy of two inches, 1.99 inches. Saiga SGL-21, the Russian AK. The AKs, uh, they kept up with the AR at 100 meters, uh, shooting five round groups. The best group that I shot with the AR was one and three quarters of an inch. The best five round group I shot with the AK was one and three quarters of an inch with the SGL-21. That's the Russian gun that I'm holding here. The Yugo M70 on deck. Let's see how it does. Shooting wolf, steel, 100 meters. Let's see how this Yugo did. The Yugoslavian was no slouch either because I think the worst group for it was three or three and a half inches but I also uh, managed to put down a few uh, two, two and a half inch groups with the Yugo. So as you can see, the AK-47 is a perfectly accurate rifle in the right configuration. That isn't to say that every single AK-47 is gonna be accurate, but just because it's an AK doesn't necessarily mean it's inaccurate. Now, before I made this video, I reached out to Carl at End Range because many of you, four million of you in fact, saw the video that Carl did with the AKM mud test. And a lot of us were really surprised by it because myth number two is that the AK-47 is invincible, at least in reliability terms. People think that you can't do anything to jam up an AK-47. And as Carl at End Range proved, that's not exactly the case. Clean, tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. Well, it works. No problemo. For now. All right, so are we ready for this? Yep, go ahead. You ready? All right, go for it. One shot. There we go. All right, fired. Failure to feed. I'm going to try and manually remediate it. I'm in battery. Fired, failure to feed. Hand cycled. 
As you see here, Carl took a perfectly functional AKM, put it in a wheelbarrow full of mud, dumped some mud on it, kind of shook it off a little bit, and he could rarely get through one or two rounds without manually chambering another round. So that's not to say that the AK-47 isn't one of the most reliable rifles out there. In fact, I would say it still is possibly one of the most reliable rifles in production, if not the most reliable rifle that's out there. But that said, they aren't as bomb-proof as everybody thinks. But this kind of stuff gets spread on gun forums, movies, shitty TV shows, where it's the same thing over and over and over and over. There's no way you can make an AK-47 jam up, but as Carl at InRange found out, you can. Thanks a ton, Carl, for letting us use the footage. That was a very interesting video. Now, moving on to myth number three, which is somewhat related to myth number one in accuracy. Myth number three is that the AK-47 has a short sight radius. In particular, I was talking about my AK-47 versus M4 video. I did accuracy testing from a Russian SGL-21 16-inch barrel against a 16-inch barrel FN M4, and they were about as accurate as the other. But I use optics, and it's amazing because people in the comments constantly said, yeah, but if you had not have used optics, because of the sight radius differential, you're going to get a lot more accuracy out of the M4 than you are out of the AK-47. And as you're about to see, that's not true. You guys might not believe me right now, but have a look at this. All right, who's ready to get angry? So as you see here, this is the notoriously short sight radius on the AK-47. Look how far forward that rear sight is, right? It's all the way forward of the back of the receiver. So it's got to have the shortest sight radius, right? Well, I've got an M4 right here, or at least the closest thing to it. We're talking about a 16-inch gun with a carbine length gas system. So it's going to have the same sight radius as the M4. And look at that. If anything, the AK-47 front sight is a little bit further out than the M4 front sight. Now, that said, that all goes out the window. Of course, once you introduce mid-length or rifle length sights, you're going to have the rear sight all the way at the back of the receiver, and then you're going to have a further forward front sight, and it's absolutely going to smoke the AK in terms of sight radius. But that said, the myth I'm addressing is that the AK-47 has a generally, as a general rule, shorter sight radius than the AR-15 and any of its variants. And as you see here, that's not exactly the case. So that myth, busted. In fact, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it bears mentioning, there are a lot of people who say that the rear sight situation of the AK-47 is better than the M4 because with the AK, it's further forward. And they say that keeping your attention further forward of the rear of the receiver, keeping the action further out from your eye increases your peripheral vision and decreases the impact of tunnel vision. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. It sounds a little tactical to me, but it does kind of sound reasonable. I don't know, sound off in the comments. Finally, myth number four, and it is always a treat to have one of the most renowned AK scholars on the program. That's right, I've got Mishiko on today's episode. He's going to address myth number four. Mishiko did a little voiceover for this section, and I also got permission from Ilya Varmalov, who is a very talented Russian photographer who's taken pictures of the inside of an AK-47 factory, and it will really complement what Mishiko has to say about myth number four, and that is that the AK-47 is cheap to manufacture. Hi, Misha here, and for number four, we're going to talk about the myth that the AK is cheap to mass produce. This is both true and false. The AK is cheap to mass produce when you mass produce it in a huge factory. It was designed in Soviet Russia to be produced in factories the size of cities. The Soviets made an assembly line, much like Henry Ford would have done with the Model T. They would have hundreds of workers, each worker specializing in one aspect, one small part, one activity. Therefore, you actually did not need truly skilled labor. You did not need specialized gunsmiths. You just needed people that knew how to do a few things very well, and they would do them over and over repetitively. So this is how the AK was able to be made by relatively inexperienced people. This method would have not been very inexpensive if you were only making a couple of thousand rifles because setting up this large of a factory is immensely expensive. 
But once it is established, once you have all your workers trained on their few steps, then the individual rifle cost gets cheaper and cheaper the more and more you produce. It took Soviet Russia over a decade to get everything down right. The AK is deceptively simple because every angle, every part, every piece of metal had the entire Soviet economy and knowledge base behind it to make it work precisely. So the AK, when you're looking at a small scale, is not necessarily cheap to mass produce. As Mishko just explained to us, the AK-47, while it might be cheap to manufacture once you've got all the implements and all the people in place, it ain't exactly cheap when you factor in all the overhead involved in building a factory the size of a city. I hope everyone enjoyed this look at the four biggest AK myths. I see these comments pop up in my comment section all the time. Doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I love to see them because then I get to make videos like this and I get to talk about myths about different guns. I want to say thank you to Ventura Munitions as usual, the best sponsor in the world. All my AK testing couldn't be done without them as a sponsor. I want to say thank you to you guys. And guys, if you're watching, if you like the content, please subscribe. It does us a huge favor and you can come and check us out. We're making videos almost every weekday. Also, if you can go to Patreon and help me out, I would really appreciate it. We give back. There are giveaways. We have tier rewards. We've got live chat. So go check us out on Patreon, please. Ah, almost forgot another thank you to Carl at InRange, to Mishiko, and to Ilya Varmalov. Without their help, I couldn't have made this video, and this was a really fun one to make. So thanks again, guys. Anyways, I will see everybody next week. Oh,